So Steve joins us today to share some breakthrough methodologies and insights around pain and the pain deception. Welcome to the show, Steve. Are you ready to launch? I am, yes. Well, it's just so exciting to have you here. This topic is so important for all of us because we all have pain in some form or another. And I would love to hear from you just kind of your overview of where you approach pain from. Sure. Uh, I guess that's best to start with what happened to me. I, I was in pain for 30 straight years and I had tried everything. I mean, absolutely everything, just short of surgery, a few weeks short of surgery. And um, I found this Dr. John Sarno at the NYU University, and he, his book, Healing Back Pain, was talking about how it's not coming from the structure of the spine. It's not the herniated disc. It's not the stenosis. It's not the, the crookedness of it. It's not the degeneration. It's none of those things. It is oxygen loss from the autonomic nervous system. And when uh, I read that book and I did the work, I healed. And I've been free now for 17 years. And then, of course, this, this has to do with all parts of the body, whether it's knees, shoulders, feet, hands. He called this thing TMS for tension myoneural syndrome. And uh, he literally changed the world forever. But the world doesn't know it yet. Uh, a film just came out about him last December called All the Rage. And uh, he's turned the entire medical paradigm upside down on its head. And of course, there's great resistance to it. But I've been working with people for 17 years now. I have three books out there. And they heal virtually every single time once they understand that there's nothing wrong with their physical body in chronic pain. It is an unconscious emotional process. And the unconscious emotion is, is primarily anger. That's really fascinating. And I know that uh, I know several people who have healed using your work. And uh, it really resonates for me because when we have a lot of emotions locked in our bodies, it, we're, we're holding this tension and walking around with that tension, right? Right. And there's the, the highest hurdle is that it's unconscious. And when I read his work at first, I didn't understand it either. I didn't quite get the notion of the unconscious. I kept saying, okay, uh, but I don't feel the anger. I don't feel the, feel the anxiety. I don't feel that. You never will. You will never feel these things. They are unconscious. They're outside of your awareness. And they're coming through the body in what's called somaticizing, where the body is expressing it. And the proof that all of these structural changes in the body are not causing the pain is that, that almost everyone heals. And they're, and they're still there. So it could not have been the cause. And my books have helped tens of thousands to heal right now. And Dr. Sarno is in the millions by now. And um, it is a very, very, very amazing process, elegant process, because by nature's design, the body knows how to heal itself. If, if you're, you're, whether it's a disease or a pain, if it's ongoing and you can't stop it, you have to take a look at an unconscious process happening. So one thing that I really want to get into here is how it's done, because uh, if you say that most pain is unexpressed anger and it's not about feeling the anger expressing it in certain ways because we can't ever really know it's there because it's unconscious so what uh what method do you take people through to start to unwind the pain that's living in the body well i guess the main method is the knowledge of what's going on between mind and body i mean it the, the normal course of events is you have a pain in your back and you go to a physician and they'll take an mri and they'll see a herniated disc right there and they'll go right there that's it there's the cause but that's been proven wrong so many decades ago back in the 1970s he discovered this and so um you have to reject that and repudiate that 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 would be the cause of it and so you begin to gather this knowledge you read about what is happening between the mind and the body and in this whole process of TMS. And sometimes people will heal after the books are read. I have oh, quite a few people have read my book and healed. Now, most of the people, they'll need more work. They'll need to dig into their lives a little bit deeper, their relationships, you know, how much fun are they having in their lives, how much fear. And then there's a small, even smaller percentage that will need intense therapy because they were severely abandoned as children. 
And that's where all the anger comes from, by the way. Anger is from separation. When, when we have no control of the people separating from us in our life, this is where the anger comes in. When, if we could control everything that we wanted throughout our day, we would never be anger, angry. If we could have everything we wanted, it's the things we are helpless to control that cause the anger. And so there's no one cookie cutter method because everybody is unique. Although we are all the same in many ways, of course, but everybody is also unique. Some people just amazingly can read it and they can just, when they're done, I've had people with severe fibromyalgia do uh, Skype consultations with me. And by the time uh, we were done talking, it was gone. Their pain was gone. And same with back pain, knee pain sometimes, but the normal course of events is to dig deeper, you know, do more work. And one of the things, one of the, if you're asking about a, like a process is to become more physical. Dr. Sarno said the most important thing that you have to do to overcome the pain is to get more aggressive physically. Now, that's really scary for most people because they feel like they're doing damage to their body, their knee, ankle, foot, back. And it takes quite a bit of courage really, really to heal. But uh, I began running. I was scared to run because I'd lost 54 pounds at one point. It actually worked. It worked. It took me a while, because, but I was in serious shape. I had a paralyzed left leg. My le left leg was paralyzed for nine months with drop foot. I drug it around the house for nine months. And the whole time the neurosurgeon was saying, you've got a pinched nerve. Well, that wasn't true at all. It wasn't getting any oxygen. And this is a, a complete paradigm shift. It, it really is an amazing discovery and, and worthy of a Nobel Prize in medicine. But each person's individual, when I consult with them, they, um, I, I listen to their words. Where are the greatest fears? What aren't they understanding about the process? And so I'm, in essence, an educator. You know, I, I just teach people about this process. And um, they're healing at an amazingly high rate, especially when great people like you two are, uh, let us get this message out there. Because it gets blocked at every turn. The medical industry blocks this message at every single turn. No matter what articles I put in, in newspapers, magazines, they always have all of their advertising around it. Hey, Steve, and, something, uh, something yes. that you're saying that is really powerful, uh, especially for, for us as entrepreneurs, uh, coaches for entrepreneurs, and then just for myself as someone who's really into sports and movement. And uh, recently we did an interview with Brandon Lucero, and I was talking to him. This is this is how we, I actually found your work here, Steve, is a friend of mine as well as a coach and entrepreneur, Brandon Lucero, who was doing a big launch. And towards the end of his launch, so he's you know launching a digital product and putting it out there and working really hard uh, to get all the content out and everything that you have to do that's associated with launching a product and getting it into the hands of a lot of people. And his back went out and he was bedridden. He really couldn't get up and move around. He was not sure what to do. And he reached out to one of his other friends, uh, James Wedmore. And uh, James said he was in so much pain as well that he, he just couldn't stand or anything. And he ended up ordering your book and within 24 hours was moving around, uh, you know, shooting hoops, walking around the block and completely changed and has never had that issue come back. And Brandon reached out to me about two days after he told me about his back pain. I reached out to him and I said, hey, uh, how's it going? And he goes, man, I'm like 80, 90 percent better. And I said, wow, what, 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 it, what changed? And he said, well, I got this book. My friend suggested it. James suggested it. And I'm good now. I was, whoa, whoa, what did, what did you do? Did you go to a chiropractor? Did you, what kind of medicine did you take? I mean, what did you do? And he said, I read the book, and one of the key things that this book was by Steve said is that the pain in our body, uh, physical pains are a lot of times manifestations of anger. And I thought, whoa, what kind of therapy do you do in 24 hours to get in touch with that anger and pretty much like release it so you can move. And that's the fascinating thing because if you're an entrepreneur and you're sitting at your desk all the time, you're getting neck pains, you're getting back pains, you're getting stiff hips. Uh, all of us who work on our computers a lot, and this is like the current day and age, right, where we sit on our computers a lot. And Dr. Uh, Kathleen Hendricks, who was also on our show, said, um, sitting is the new cancer, and that's something that I'm hearing you saying, too, is like, well, if you have pain, 
the antidote is movement, getting in touch with with what anger is there. And I'm curious from you, are there particular movements that you recommend? Are there particular, like, what kind of therapy are we talking about here in regards to getting in touch with that anger? Right, right. Yes, um, these, there's fine lines in everything that we do here, and um, that's one of them. Anything that you do actionable is going to cause the pain to stay longer. And that's why you have to stop everything that you're doing, absolutely everything. No, no surgeries, no injections, no chiropractic manipulations. No acupuncture, no physical therapy. You have to stop all of that and get into the mind. Okay, that's this is where the healing begins. And of course, your friend there. I mean, that's obvious because I've seen so many thousands of these. You know, it's it's he's pushing himself to get that launch out there. We're being pushed and pushed and pushed. Oh, the unconscious anger rises. The magnitude is off the off the charts. And so it happens a lot when people are getting married or when they're in college or whatever. I remember Dr. Sarno in 2020 talking about that. These people push, push, push themselves hard. And it's deeply enraging. The child inside of us is is not like that at all. So as far as the physical aspects of it, you don't want to do anything specifically physical ever to reduce pain because that's nothing but physical therapy again. By becoming physical, we mean get out there and do what you want to do with your life. You know, just... Just live your life the way you want want to do it. If you want to play tennis, if you want to golf, if you want to run marathons, whatever, just do it. You know, with no fear. That's the key. He created this word called physicophobia. As long as people are afraid to do anything physical, then the, they are doomed to have reoccurrences of pain. That's a quote from his great book. And so the thing is, just go start living again. Forget about your body. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it, no matter what your physician has said, no matter what you've seen on those MRIs. That is not the cause of the pain. The brain just happens to be using that in, at that time in the body. Sometimes it'll use a herniation. Sometimes it'll use a narrowing. Okay, but every, so, there's, so this, yeah. is, this is where I definitely like I want to interject here because I'm, I'm hearing you say – Get out there and do stuff. If you, you know, having or you're having some kind of herniation or your back's out or, you know, your your neck is hurting so bad you can barely move. Just get out there and, 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 and do something and live your life. And it's all in the mind. When I hear you say that, I go immediately, man, the medical community must absolutely hate you. What you're saying sounds like it could potentially be uh, dangerous. And so what are the fine lines with what you're saying uh, because to me, it, it sounds potentially dangerous what you're saying as well. Yeah, well, I mean, definitely people have to get, you know, checked out medically because there are things that are not this, of course. Uh, I ran across a guy who he had an aneurysm in his spine. That's not what we're talking about here. And there's been people with tumors in their spine. That That's not what we're talking about here either. We're talking about the common herniations, right? The scoliosis, the degenerated disc, those, those common things. And so the, one of those fine lines is that um, if you start going out to physically reduce the pain, then you're doing nothing but physical therapy again. And so the, it's the obsession on the body. You see, that's what the brain wants. The brain is creating a symptom, hoping you obsess. Because the people, uh, by and large, have OCD personalities. They're anxious by the way, there's a certain personality that fits this this pain syndrome better than anything that we call the type T, T for tension. They're usually warriors. They're usually independent. They're usually um, hard driven. They're they're somewhat anxious. They're very responsible people. They're goodists. Doctor Sarno talked about that. These people are good people. They're always wanting to keep everybody happy around them. But perfectionism is the main word that would encompass everything that we see in them. Perfectionist. I don't Being qualify perfect. for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's about being perf- perfectionistic in the things you like, not everything. You know, there's certain things I could care less about, but there's other things I'm perfectionistic in. But um, the process is just mind blowing how, how much it works with every type of symptom. You know, this is something that uh, when we spoke with Brandon about his miraculous recovery from reading your book, uh, he said he was up and dancing with, and within 20 minutes he had forgotten about the pain. And it, what he was talking about uh, when he learned from your book was 
that he reshifting his focus away from the pain and distracting himself from focusing so heavily on the pain. Right, can you talk, right. Can you talk a little bit about that process? And that's what I was just saying about the brain wants you to obsess on your body. And the more you obsess on the pain, the more you magnify it. So it's about shifting your conscious awareness away from your what your physical body sensations are giving you and into your unconscious to, to try to figure out, all right, what is going on here? Why am I so stressed and angry right, right now? What's going on in my life? The main question that I ask everybody is, what's going on in your life right now? And everybody can pick it up. Um, I had a guy in a, a, a local restaurant here. He's hobbling over to me, holding his back. He says, that guy over there tells me you wrote a book on back pain. And I said, yes, when's your divorce? <laughs> and he looked at me with his mouth open. He goes, how could you have known that my wife and I are getting a divorce? Because we've not told anybody. But this, this, is, a, this is part of the process. Something is going on in your life. Something. It's usually a death or somebody's sick in the family or you're fighting with somebody or you're pushing to get a project out like your friend. And it, these people are the good people. But at the same time, the deeper self just hates being pushed like that. It just hates it. It despises it, actually. And it throws a fit in psychological conflict. And it creates to, to, to do you a favor. Your brain is actually doing you a favor here. OK, because you're about to be overwhelmed by all of these powerful emotions. And so it, it gives you a physical symptom. So you'll rivet your conscious awareness on that physical symptom and away from what's really causing the problem. Because for some reason, the brain is deemed that uh, emotional pain is, is worse than physical pain, I guess, in our evolution somewhere. So what do we have to do? Sorry, I, I, I just it, it, like a question pops up for me then. So what do I have to do? to get in touch with that frustration. I'm sitting in my computer and oh my God, my, my, my back's starting to hurt or my neck's starting to hurt or I'm just taking out the garbage and all of a sudden, oh my God, I, can, I just feel like I can barely move. What do I need to do to get in touch with that emotional anger that I'm holding on to? And is it gonna be a hard process? Is it gonna be like talking about your childhood with somebody? I mean, what is that process? I mean, now we're getting into the heart of it here, but this gets complex. Healing doesn't have to be complex, but psychology behind it can be. Um, and I guess the best way to answer that is Dr. Sarno had a patient named Helen. She was bedridden for a couple of years with severe pain. Her family heard about him in New York and got her up there. In Under psychoanalysis, she remembered being molested by her father when she was five years old. Okay, well, she was in her 40s, late 40s at this point. And so he sent her to incest support group. And her pain got worse and worse and worse. So she called him back. Her and her husband called Dr. Sarno back and said, we believe you, Dr. Sarno. We believe, you know, that this is the cause. But I'm getting worse. And the lady's husband said, you're talking about 42 years of repression. And when he said that to her, she lost it. She melted down. She started shaking. It. She, was, she thought that he was going to have a heart attack. And she was yelling, die, I want to die, I want to die, let me die. And she was shaking. She saw her life flashing before her eyes. And within minutes, the pain disappeared. So Dr. Sarno said, ah, I see what's going on here. It's a protective barrier between these unwanted emotions. It's blocking things just to help you so you can cope in your daily life. Now, everybody that came in to see Dr. Sarno wanted to do that, reach in and rip those emotions out and just you know, be free. But it doesn't work that way. He said he'd, that's the only time he'd ever seen that happen in 50 years that he was practicing medicine, in 50 years, where the unconscious burst through the, to consciousness. And so we have to do it through the conscious mind. We have to start thinking about things, you know, journaling, things like that. Start writing things out. What could possibly be really irritating me right now? And sometimes the people write these lists out and they're horrified by the list because they're 30, 40, 50 pages long. And so there's something about it the awareness of what's actually going on, that there's nothing wrong with my physical body at all. This is an unconscious process that's causing this. I should not fear. I should go back to living. There's something about that that sets the person free of the pain. Of course, it was, it's been said, right? And the truth will set you free. This is exactly what's happening. You know, Steve, you said something that really, really uh, s stuck me. It, it, it was really great. And uh, I made kind of a little comment there when you were talking about perfectionism. And I said, oh, that's that's not me. 
uh, you know, and then you, you responded by saying, well, you know, there's other areas that sometimes we're perfectionists in, so it might not be an overall kind of character thing, but certain areas. And right before this interview, I was looking for certain chords and trying to set up a really nice microphone. And you guys here at Thriving Launch know that I have about three or four different microphones, but I have one that I really like to use uh, when I'm not traveling and uh, I'm visiting family right now. So, you know, I'm, I'm staying put for a little bit and I couldn't find a chord. And so then I get on the call with you guys and I felt a little frustrated because I didn't have the perfect chord, you know, so I could set up the perfect sound system. And so I'm not getting the sound that I want. And as a podcaster and as a business person who hosts a show, it's very important to me. And uh, then you said something about the perfectionist thing. And it kind of like, I noticed that and I went, oh, yeah, my, my back's actually hurting a little bit. And I'm going to just let go of the fact that I don't have to have the perfect chord. Uh, podcasts, listeners are, are fairly forgiving. Uh, I don't have to have the perfect sound. It's not about that. We're not producing a gold album here. We're just trying to get some really amazing content out with Steve here and something that could change our listeners' lives. And I noticed this kind of just this flood of energy open up in my body, and I didn't feel that tension as much anymore. Right. And yeah, that letting go is one of the biggest things that we can do. Yeah, it's one of the last chapters in my book, The Great Pain Deception. It's called Letting Go. Um, it's sometimes letting go is one of the hardest things that we can do, though. And forgiveness is also in this, this uh, formula of healing. Uh, there's a great uh, psychiatrist named Gerald Jampolsky that I cited in my first book. He had lifelong back pain. He said, and then there was this voice in his head one day that said, you're holding grievances against these people. And he said he forgave those people and his back pain went away and never came back. So it's not a simple, you know, it's not a cookie cutter thing. I can't say do X, Y, and Z and you will heal. It's so different because the human brain is so complex that working with each individual person is actually an art form. You have to get a feeling for what they're afraid of, what they don't understand. But really the knowledge is the first thing in this process. You have to gain the knowledge. Well, for, I guess the first step is always get a, get a physical exam. You want to make sure there's no malignant process happening there. Make sure your life is not in any danger first. That's the most important thing to do. But once the doctor clears you of danger, just disregard all that other stuff that he tells you about this arthritis and that arthritis. I mean, I've seen people with the most amazing arthritis heal from this. It is just amazing. I mean, my, even my own left hip, it looks like a candle warped over. There's no hip joint left in it. And yet the pain disappeared from there because my brain was only using those arthritic changes. It was, it was opportunistic. And so what we have here is a spurious correlation. The, the medical industry has created spurious correlations, which means a false correlation between what's seen on the imaging and the sensations of pain. And that was, was the brilliant discovery of Dr. Sarno. And uh, boy, has he helped a lot of people. That film is going to be an amazing piece. One of the things that you really remind me of, and, and Kamala, feel free to chime in. You have a lot of uh, input and great wealth of knowledge in, in this area, just as far as health and stuff. One of the things that you really make me think of, uh, Steve, is I was reading the book uh, Emotional Intelligence by Daniel Goldman, and in one of his chapters, he cites a study of people who had a history of repeated heart attacks. And they spoke with the doctor. They, they, they did some, some kind of experimental treatment with the people who had heart attacks. And they really just had them do some deep breathing exercises and some meditation. And no one else had a heart attack again. And when Daniel Goldman interviewed the doctor, the doctor said, you know, if I could teach people how to be less stressed, I feel like my job as a doctor would be pretty much done for 80, 90 percent of my clients. Well, and that's so true. I've seen that book. Amazon's always suggesting that to me. I might pick that book up. But yeah, that is so true. You know, heart attack is your heart attacking you because you're driving it crazy. You can't take it anymore. It's not, has that nothing to do with genes? There's no genetics involved in this TMS process at all. It doesn't matter whether your dad and mom had back pain and their mom and dad had back pain, that you can heal. The people heal. It has nothing to do with that. It's a strategy by the brain to help you cope and to protect you from things that you do not want to know. And so they're outside of your awareness. You'll never know them. 
One thing about what you're saying is it's such empowering information. Even if we're listening right now and we're not in chronic pain, just to take this information in and use it for later, because I know that uh, with with what you're saying about pain, if you know, most of the pain is from anger and then that anger comes from abandonment that we've had in some time of our life. And I was thinking, I've been thinking a lot about our friend, Brandon Lucero talking about his experience with this. And uh, I'm out in the woods right now in my cabin out, and Luis is out in the mountains with his family and I'm out in, on an island. And so I'm alone out in the woods and I was climbing up my, uh, very steep stairs and the power went out and while I was on the stairs and I slipped and fell, you know, pretty far. And, uh, just like I was laying there alone in the woods in so much pain. And I felt so alone in that moment. And I, I know that in that moment there was a choice. Like I could have driven that pain deeper into my body or I thought about what Brandon shared and, I thought about that I, I just need to get up and keep moving. And yeah, like I think I may have, you know, sprained or broken my toe, but I haven't been stopped. You know, I like I've been walking still and I am going skiing in a few days. And, you know, I just feel like I don't even though my toe is like black and blue, I feel like it's not about ignoring it. It's not about for me. It's not about like putting the pain away altogether or hurting myself or just checking out, but it's actually being more present by moving through it. Uh, is that kind of like a little bit about the process you're talking about? Yeah, a little bit, but of course, you know, we can injure ourselves. That's, that's called an acute injury. Acute injury pain is a gift from nature to let us know we're in danger. You know, whether you've touched something too hot or whether you've cut yourself or whether you have an infection. And so acute injuries help us to inform us but the problem is, if you're in what I like to call a TMS state and you're pushing yourself hard at that time, there's all kinds of relationship things going on in your life, and then you fall like you did, the brain will become opportunistic and it will attach itself to that injury and it won't heal and it won't heal. And months will go by and sometimes years will go by and these people can't get over it. That's the brain using it at that point. And so, yeah, you can't hurt yourself like it sounds like you did. And it, but the body would heal in very quick fashion, days, weeks, at the, at the outside months, if it really injures yourself terribly. By nature's design, the body heals itself. It cannot stay in chronic pain forever. It cannot, unless there's an emotional process. I definitely feel that healing is much more rapid than it would have been if I, if I would have just really focused on how hurt I am, how alone right, I exactly. am. <laughs> And it's you know, right. You had the knowledge right there helped you. The knowledge of what was going on, the, the knowledge of what could actually happen. <laughs> and so, yeah, I mean, this is not just chronic pain either. I mean, we're talking about, you know, ulcers and uh, irritable bowel syndrome, Lyme disease is the new one. Oh, man, the doctors are creating epidemics all over with this Lyme thing. You know, these people that have chronic TMS, it's TMS pain, but when they go in, they'll do blood work and they'll see that the Lyme antibody titers in there. And so they'll blame it on Lyme's when it is not Lyme's. Just because the antibody is in the body, it does not mean it's causing the pain. And so this is these nonstop false associations with the testing and the symptom. And so the, the, the TMS physicians are the elite physicians in the world. They know the difference between real you know, I don't want to call this, this is not an unreal pain. This is real physical pain. Like your friend Brandon knows he was in serious pain. But um, the TMS physicians, they'll talk to the person for like an hour and a half. Okay, what's going on in your life now? What was your relationship like with your parents? You know, do you need to push yourself hard? Do you need to win? A lot of the times this personality needs to win. We have to do it right. We have to be first. It can be complex, but um, sometimes... The, these people drive people crazy when they do, they're just told what's going on and the pain disappears. That drives most people crazy because they're able to uproot the old paradigm in their mind quickly and just flip it up and boom, they're on with their lives again. But, um, you know, mine started when I was like a little boy. My pain started when I was 14 years old. There was a lot of tension around, a lot of tension. I was pushing myself to be an athlete, all-star in so many sports. Oh, it just got to me. Of course, then I went to the physicians and they made it last for 30 years. 
constantly doing things to it. And the more I did to it, the longer it lasted. And so the key was like, as Dr. Sarno proved, stop all that stuff. Go out and live your life again. You're okay. You're okay. And so I am so thrilled to actually be telling people about this work because each one of these shows that I do, somebody contacts me and they heal. And so hopefully, you know, somebody's listening here who has something. It could be a skin problem, you know, it, it goes into your teeth. Sometimes people get their teeth pulled, which they don't need pulled. And then, then it moves to the next tooth because the brain just keeps shifting the strategy. Like with Tiger Woods right now, he pulled out of the new golf tournament again Saturday. It's like I said that he would. He gets his disc operated on and it just moves to the next disc. That's the way the brain does it. The brain just shifts its strategy. It'll just keep shifting it until you you deal with what's going on behind the scenes in your life. And so, yeah, I really hope, you know, some of your listeners really, really benefit from this because it's the most rewarding thing I've ever done. Thank you so much for joining us here today, Steve. Hey, Thriving Launchers, I want to let you know that Steve's book and extra resources are on thrivinglaunch.com or you can grab his book, The Pain Deception. It's a fantastic read. Absolutely loved it. And the points that he made today, we're just skimming the surface today. His book has got a lot more in-depth stuff. And like I said before, it's helped somebody like James Wedmore go within 24 hours from having like a herniated back and not being able to move to 24 hours later. He's out there playing basketball, throwing Frisbee, walking around, working. Brandon Lucero, kind of same story. I'm absolutely enthralled by the work and today's interview. Thank you so much, Steve. Really a pleasure to have you here on the show today. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity to talk about this. You've been listening to the Thriving Launch Podcast. For books and resources related to today's episode, make sure to head over to thrivinglaunch.com. We'll see you there.